Casey Bell, and you're watching Writer to Writer Interviews. Welcome to another episode of Writer to Writer Interviews. I'm Casey Bell, your host, and today's episode we feature Kenneth Ward, the author of I Will Be Accountable and Responsible, a great book, self-help book for those out there who are learning how to be accountable and responsible. Let's get into the conversation about his journey on publishing this, his first book. So what was the inspiration for this book? Uh, the inspiration for this book, I Will Be Accountable and Responsible, well, basically it was an all boys speaking engagement where um, actually I didn't get a chance to speak, which is, uh, and the theme was uh, accountability and responsibility. And so what happened was um, I wasn't able to speak and that night I went home, I was feeling a little down, a little depressed, but um, I just kind of just, I kicked it back up and I said, no, I'm not gonna let that, um, I'm not gonna let that, I'm not gonna let that stop me. And so what happened was um, I went home and I created a t-shirt, which I'm wearing right now, which is says, a give a brother a hand, I will be accountable and responsible. And it just outlined all the areas of the book. So then after that, uh, a few days later, God just gave me the inspiration like, okay, well, why don't you take the areas of the book and develop it into a book? Let me um, take the areas of the t-shirt and develop it into a book. And also the desire to just uplift, inspire individuals to reach their success. I was just like, okay. And then the book just came about. So how have you used the messages in this book during the quarantine? That I thought was a very good question. Um, and basically during this quarantine, right? How have I used the messages in this book? Well, we all know uh, we witnessed the lynching of um, George Lloyd, George Floyd, uh, excuse me. And actually I had a friend that lived close nearby and he, uh, and he also purchased the book a while back. And um, after the lynching, he more or less came to my house. He only lived a few doors down and actually he's a substitute teacher. So he came to me just really, really just infuriated, just upset, and he was just hurt. And so during our conversation, no, because he was ready to go over there. He was ready to go and take a flight to go over to Minnesota and actually commit some stuff, just, just, just do some stuff against some cops. I mean, he was just really infuriated and he really wanted to go over there. So um, the first chapter is I will be accountable and responsible for my seed. And um, I kind of reminded him that, um, you know, if he went over there and something happened to him, that would be a good chance that he would endanger his seed. Of course, he don't have any kids yet. But that's the same thing with George Floyd, because when, when they actually lynched him and they killed him, they didn't actually just kill George Floyd. They killed all the seeds that would come from from out of him. So I reminded him of that. And um, that that was a, that was the first chapter in the book. Chapter two is um, I will be accountable and responsible for my potential and creativity. And he's a very smart individual and he's very good with the young kids as well in the schools. And he um, created a program to actually help the youth and all of those things. And actually a vice principal put him in charge of a program as well. So I said, listen, also, man, don't forget, I'm sure that you can reach others and make a difference another way than going out there and just, you know, not really having a plan and just doing anything that could just cause himself harm. The third chapter, I will be accountable and responsible for how and what I think. That was key because his thinking was not more or less according to his true character at the time. Um, he, was, he was just more or less looking to um, react. And so, you know, I kind of talked him into, hey, l listen, um, just to kind of calm down his uh, thinking. And um, th that's uh, another way how I use the book. And then, of course, the fourth chapter, his choices and decisions, which is I will be accountable and responsible for the choices and decisions. So I kind of just helped him choose the right thing to do in the right time. And so I reminded him of the book and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay, good. And we actually just happened to go down to a protest in Newark and um, you know, it was cool. Um, and uh, everything, it worked out good after that. This okay. is your first book, correct? Yep. 
Yep, this is the very what, first book. What are some tips or some things you experienced you learned in publishing your first book? Um, well, Chuck, actually I learned a lot of uh, different things about uh, publishing my first book, but what I learned about myself in publishing this first book was that once I applied the principles that I've been learning for the past 20 years in terms of a personal de development and just being successful, I learned that when I actually applied those things, it may sound corny, but I could actually really accomplish anything that I put my mind to. So that's one, that's so that, that was one important thing that I learned about myself um, throughout this um, first book. And what was the most difficult or most challenging thing that you can remember from publishing this book? See, now that one, that's a very good question. And I was like, wow. Um, the most difficult part was, it was a few things that just more, more or less um, came together. Les Brown, right? Uh, he's one of my um, inspirators that I listen to often, um, inspirations. And he said the, one of the hardest things he had to overcome with regard to being successful is just believing in himself. And that was one of the hardest things about doing and creating this book was, first, I really had to believe in myself. And that was something that I struggled with like all my lifetime. So it was very, very important that I believed in myself. Another thing was um, overcoming that inner voice inside me. You know, um, in, a script, um, in the Bible, there's a scripture that says, whenever I want to do good, evil is always present. So definitely that inner voice would always fight me and tell me, no, I'm not good enough. No, I can't do it. No, individuals aren't going to like it. So I had to constantly fight that inner voice while doing this, uh, um, while creating this first book. And um, another thing was the fear of the book not being good enough. Um, and, you know, fear can just, you know, uh, will always throw you off course anyway. So I had to deal with that. Um, and distractions. Oh, so many things just try to just come in my way in the process of writing this book. So that was another, another difficult thing that I had to overcome. In addition to that, um, a lot of people deal with this. I know I have throughout my life in regards to just starting and stopping things and never a following through. And that was one, um, another one of the big things in the pot that was actually a difficult writing this first book. Um, I was really challenged to start something and see it all the way through. So those things and the combination was like really, really um, was the most hardest, was the most hard part in, um, in writing this first book. Yep, 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 those things put together. One of the things I remember when I, prior to me being um, disciplined, Ugh. when I was writing my books, I was like, oh, I need music. And I have music on my computer, but sometimes maybe I want to hear a song that's not on my computer, so I'll go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So let me just okay. look up the song, I'm going to press play, and then I'm going to start writing. Hour later, I'm still on YouTube. <laughs> Hour and a half later. <laughs> oh, I never got to the song because you know when you get to YouTube they show you all those recommendations and what's trending uh -huh. and you start mm -hmm. watching video and then uh, annoyingly enough on the side of YouTube you see more videos that are interesting more and videos. you're like this is the last video I'm watching and then I'm gonna find my song and then I'm like <laughs> I'll just do this tomorrow yeah so I finally had to learn how to stay away from YouTube when I'm uh, yeah. writing because okay. mm -hmm. when you said distractions come I can be honest, I gave myself distractions. Wow. Like they didn't come, I, like, I would be like, ugh, I don't feel like writing this today. <laughs> and so I gave myself distractions. And I finally had to say, I have to stop doing that because it's not healthy mm -hmm. and it's not conducive. And it's, you know, if we're supposed to be faithful in the least. Exactly. Something as simple as giving yourself a distraction so you don't finish the work you know you're supposed to be doing is not good. So I had to yeah. finally learn how to, when I get, sit down at this computer to write, that's all I'm doing. Okay. And even sometimes I won't even turn music on because that'll, even if I turn music on, I'm like, okay, what do I want to listen to? And I have like, uh, a whole bunch of lists and then I think I want to listen to that. So it's yeah, like, yeah, I have to yeah. learn how to stop giving myself distractions so I can mm -hmm. just write and finish it. Okay. Okay. Yep. 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 But I have a quick question um, for you, right? Why do you think you gave yourself those distractions? Um, 
I'll say two reasons. The first reason is the process of the, the story coming up with stories is fun for me. Oh, okay. But the process of typing it out is not. Ah, uh, okay. And then I guess you could say I'm a little OCD because I usually tell people just write it out and go back and edit it. I don't do that. Oh, wow. Okay. I have to edit it while I'm going. And it has to be proper formatting. And if it's not, I have to go back. And so, and the second reason wow. is for me, even though I know I need to stop doing this because I've learned that it doesn't work this way, but in my mind, I need to have if beginning, middle, and end before I start writing. Like the whole mm -hmm. thing in my, in my mind, even okay. though I know sometimes if I just start writing, it'll come to me. I still hate writer's block. I like to just, if I take a break, it's because I'm hungry or I need to go to sleep. I don't uh, want to take a break because yeah. of writer's block. So if I don't think I have it all, I'll make up excuses as to why I can't sit down and write. Uh, okay. But okay. I had to learn, actually recently, I was writing a short film and I knew the ending. <laughs> but I really, there was, originally it was supposed to be a full in film, but it was so much stuff that I didn't need. Oh, so I said, I'll just okay. make it short. But then I was like, I don't know how to get to the end. So I kept procrastinating to sit down and do it. And the Holy Spirit was like, just write it backwards. You know the ending, write the ending and take it from there. Wow, and that's that. what I did. I wrote it, I started from the ending and it, it, and that's the second time you told me to do that. And you think by now I would just do that? Yeah. But I'm stubborn in the sense that I, like, I wanna do beginning, middle and end, but I wrote the end and then the rest, then I wrote like another part. And then, because sometimes I'll say something while I'm writing, but I didn't actually say what was said. So now I have to go back and write that okay. same. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Okay. It really does write itself, but I have to learn how to just, um, what's the word? Force myself, um, discipline myself to just sit down and write it, regardless mm -hmm. of the fact that I don't like formatting and I don't like typing yeah. it out. And I did buy um, a while ago, I think it was called Dragon. It's a software where you put ear thingies on and you speak into the computer and it types it out for you. Really, how does that work? <laughs> I want one of those. It's, I didn't like it. No? No. Wow. I, I mean, you would, because um, you basically have to, today I went to the park. Like you can't just flow it out. Oh, okay. And for me, gotcha. when I'm in my mind, when I'm thinking of it, it flows out and it doesn't exactly. do it quickly. Yeah, and that and makes sense. It's just, and it doesn't really format it for you either. So you got to go back and format it anyways. It just types out the words oh. for you. So mm -hmm. it was, I mean, it was okay, but I couldn't get with it. Exactly. Okay. So okay. I mm -hmm. said, I guess I'm going to have to type this stuff out myself. But well, the old yeah, fashioned I'm, way, I'm, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm more disciplined now than when I began, which is good. Yeah, oh my goodness. You just have such a body of work on your website. I was just like, oh my goodness. Uh the conversation is getting really great, but don't you dare go away because we have more for you. I will be accountable and responsible is an informative personal development book on how to tap into one's gifting, talent, and purpose to attain unshakable character and to sustain higher levels of maturity and success. Available today at accountableandresponsible.com. Essays from Dysfunctional Families, a book written by Dean K. Brent exposing his family's and friends' secrets. Literary Betrayal is his family's and friends' reactions. Two books and one. Uniquely written by author Casey Bell. Available now. We are back with more conversation with author Kenneth Ward. Let's continue this great conversation. Uh, right, real quick, right? If I could ask you a question. Sure. Um, so... I see that you wrote so many books, so many plays, 
Like, I'm just honored to interview you. And it's just like, wow, like, how does he do all these things? So I wanted to know, like, so what inspires you to write books? You, um, you know how some people who do it for the fame, to get rich, like, 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 what's really your inspiration? because you have such a body of work. Well, the funny thing is in school, I didn't do well in English class. So I, and I remember this day, this, to this day, and I still don't know why he was in my class because he was much smarter than me um, book wise. <laughs> but in eighth grade English class, my friend was sitting behind me. And in English class, it was always the same thing. I would learn, I'm like, do my paper, my test, and I'm like, I got an A, mm -hmm. and then I get the paper back, and it'd be a C, and I'm like, what did I wow. do? Like, uh -huh. I did everything you told me to do, and I couldn't get it right, so one day I just said, I'm, I said, I'll never get English, and he, my friend says, then you'll never be a writer, and my response was, I don't care, I don't want to be a writer, and wow. I didn't realize then I was in a way planting a seed, so to speak, because I basically uh -huh. said I'll never write, and that was planting a seed to be a writer. So to speak, they say I never, say never. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, so you're right about that. What happened was, and I, I only know now because I found my old books, journals I used to keep. So in hmm. 2003, I was watching a Lifetime film. Okay. And just said to myself, this is a good film. However, it would be better if such and such happened instead. Got you. And I heard Holy Spirit say, you should write this down into a book. And, that, and mind you, I already knew by then I'm never going to be a writer. And I can't be a writer because I'm not good at English. So my first thought was, I can't, I can't do that. No one in my, mm. and back then, there was self-publishing, but it wasn't publishing what it wasn't it, what it was then than it is now. It's so exactly. much easier to publish a book today. Yeah. Than back uh -huh. then. Yeah. So my thought was, yeah. there is not one published company on earth that would pick up my book okay. so okay, no got and i don't know why but at some point i said well by faith i'll just start writing it so i opened my, my journal and i started writing this book and i kept getting um writer's block mm. and i kept going back and forth back and forth to it and then 2007 actually was the first year that i published not that book but another book I'm the diary of Stephanie Dane. And that was simply because I wrote that book because it was my, not my personal experience, but the experience mm -hmm. of the students in my high school. Oh, uh, okay. Because I experienced a lot of stuff. And it was actually at Word Up, we had the uh, how to self-publish um, seminar. Oh, okay. okay. Shelly bought in someone she knew. And I was like, I guess this is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The, the I really company. don't think anyone's going to pick up my stuff. And I actually submitted something to a publishing company and they said it was great. However, and they sent me information on classes I should take. Wow. So okay. I knew my storyline was good. I just needed better writing skills. Gotcha. So, but when we had to, how to um, best, how to self publish, I was like, I think this might be where it's going to happen because. I don't think I'll ever get anyone to publish my books for me. Exactly. Okay. And so I took notes and everything. And then I was like, I'm just going to do this. Like, I'm, yes, I'm going to do it because yes, yes, and yes. So I've been on that road ever since. And then the very first book I started writing that's um, inspired by a lifetime film is a family of strangers, which was published, I think in 2015. So it took wow. me a long time. So I started in 2003 and finished okay. in 2015. Cool. Wow. Because it wasn't so much, it was just a writer's block. I knew my ending, but I didn't want to take too long to get there. And I also didn't want to take too short to get there because okay. the ending, I'm not going to say it's an impossible ending because we all, anything can happen. Anything However, can happen. However, most people who would read it would say it's an impossible ending. Okay. So I felt like if I took too short to get there, it would be unbelievable. Oh, gotcha. But then okay. if I took too long, people would get bored and just put the book down and not finish it. Exactly, right. So and that's, uh, my problem was how do I get to the ending where it's not too short and it's not too long? Okay. And that was the very first time when the Holy Spirit said, you need to write it backwards. Just write the ending and then go from there. And that's, I, so. I did. And that's how I finished it. 
I think that's such a clever way, which leads me to this next question, right? If I can, um, of course you have a ton of books here. Um, and when I was reading over your work, I just saw what more or less stood out to me was the titles that you have for the books. And I wanted to know what method did you use for coming up with, with the titles? Because they are so, they're kind of unique and peculiar, but at the same time, very catchy. And it will make you just say, huh? Like, what is this about? <laughs> That's a hard question to answer because every book has its own conception story. Okay, okay. Um, the Diary of Stephanie Dane, I called it that simply because um, my first year of high school, my dad bought me notebooks. Okay. And I had, an extra, I had one too, too many extra. So I turned that one into my journal. Nice, okay. And that's how that became... The diary because it oh, was, that's yeah. what it really was okay got it um the um four score which was my second book there is this song from the broadway musical hair it's called mm -hmm. four score okay and uh -huh. i used to sing it and i just kept saying i need to write a book about four score oh, <laughs> i have no clue okay. what it's going to be about and what <laughs> but it, i need to write a book about for score and how that book came about was I was going to New York for auditions and kept getting rejected and I got frustrated. And so I said, I'm gonna write a book about me being a person and getting frustrated and something happens to him. And the story comes about where he becomes part of a boy group and it's four people in a band. So that's how it came up with four score. Wow. Okay. Um, a family of strangers. I can't tell you because it would, be a spoiler if I oh, told okay. you how I came okay. up with that title, so I can't tell you that. But, I don't know if you want to know any other no, one. No, no. Yeah, there is one that I want to know, and I want to know if you could elaborate a little bit too on this one. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, which one is it? It's um, how did the rainbow break up? Like the, the day, the day the rainbow, the rainbow broke up. Yeah, yeah. And what is that about? I mean, that, the, was, that one is so catchy to me. That because, was originally a play uh, that okay. I turned into a children's book. Uh, okay. So that's about, um, I think 2015, 2016. I was, I have, I use different emails. And one of the emails I use mail.com when you log out immediately, they show you the trending news or whatever is happening. Okay. So I logged out and there was some, something happened in somebody's school races. They got an argument, something. And I just said to myself, why are people are so stupid? I said, have you ever seen the rainbow fight over each other about the, you know, the different colors of the rainbow <laughs> being <laughs> with each other because one thinks one's better than the other? And immediately I went, that's a play. <laughs> like, wow. okay. just, okay. Yeah. Said, okay. That's a play. That's a children's theater play to teach children that you really shouldn't hate each other because of skin color. Because the rest exactly. of the nature exactly. comes in all different colors and they're not fighting each other because of that. That is so, so I wrote the profound. play. And then the only reason why I turned it into a book because the first children's book I wrote, I just wrote for my um, nieces and nephews. I had really no intentions of publishing it for everyone. I believe I got that one, right? But that was I'm Beautiful? Um, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I kind of thought, have that one. I can't just have one children's book. <laughs> I feel like I got to have more than one. So okay. My second and my third children's book are actually based on plays I wrote. Oh. So that was just my easy way of coming up with children's books. Okay, nice. Okay, nice. I like that one. I have to get that one. That That's a very good concept. I yeah. like that. It's basically, because um, when I wrote the play, it's because there's seven colors, um, red, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, indigo, and violet are the oh, colors of the okay. rainbow. Mm -hmm. So the seven of them get into an argument trying to figure out which one is better than the other, which one is more important to the rainbow than the other. And so they break up and they decide to each make their own rainbow. <laughs> and then different, the reason why I did this is because the other plays I used to produce, I would always, um, while I would write, I would submit them to theater companies and they would reject it saying, you have too many people in your cast. We can't, we can't afford that many. Oh, okay. So because there were seven characters, I said, I have to make each 
actor play more than one role because no one's going to want to do this because there's too many. So what I did was each actor played a part of nature. So the red who played the red part of the rainbow plays the rose, the red rose. Okay. And the red rose sees one part of the rainbow and says, you're not the rainbow. The rainbow comes in all colors, yada, yada, yada. And they're like, uh, oh, okay. I'm better than the rest. No, no one's better. And they each basically teach each color of the rainbow that you're, you're, you're great separately, but you're better together. Oh, yeah. And yes. Once all seven of them get a visit from some part of nature, and I use um, plants, insects, and animals, once each of them gets a visit, they realize their mistake, and then they get together, and then they, the rainbow gets back together, and they're not fighting anymore. And so that's what that, it's basically about. That is a powerful children's story. Wow, wow, wow. It is. Oh, wow, man. That has to, that's a powerful children's story. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's definitely a reflection of our country, the, yes. the, where we're at right now, and the history of our country for ever since its inception. So that is so profound. So mm -hmm. profound. Nice, 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 nice. <sighs> okay. Oh, wait, let me see. Oh. Okay, uh, another question. Um, which is your favorite book out of all of them and why? I don't know, but this might be a hard one. Uh, People maybe. always ask me that and I always tell them, I don't have a favorite, but I do pick one out because of its uniqueness. And okay. that would be the essays of dysfunctional families, literary fiction. I'm um, no literary portrayal. Okay. And what it is, it's basically, it's two books in one book. Mm. But how it works is, so the second part of the book, Literary Betrayal, is about an author, a best-selling author, who he's struggling, you know, um, he's trying to um, get a good job. And so he gets this, he submits an idea to a book to a uh, publishing company in England, and they accept it. So he travels to England, he gets his book published, and then it becomes a bestseller. The problem with it is, the book that he wrote is called Essays of Dysfunctional Families. And what he did was he took all of the secrets from his family and his friends uh -huh. and he put it in the book. And even though he changed names and things of that sort, they still knew it was about them and they felt uh -huh. like he betrayed them, which is why it's called Literary Betrayal, that they betrayed him with the book. Mm. And the inspiration behind this book was I wanted to actually do that. There was a lot of secrets going on. And I wanted to publish it, but I always felt like if anyone read my books and knew about it, they would be angry with me, upset with me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So instead, I decided to write literary portrayal of an author who actually did that. And as I was writing it, in my opinion, it was boring. Because all you heard was his family and his friends yelling at him, I hate you, I'll never forgive you, how could you do this? But to me, I'm like, if the reader doesn't get to read what he actually wrote, it's not going to they're not going to care. Exactly. Uh huh. So true, true. the first book within the book is the book he wrote. And then the second book is the reaction of his family and his friends of this book. Oh, okay. And so the reason why I say is I, I pick it out always is because it's the first book, it, to my knowledge, where you get two books in one and you get a book about a fictional author and this fictional author's book. And it's unique. I don't think anyone's mm -hmm. ever done it before. And it's also wow. one I've, pick out because for me, you know, as the Bible says, confess your sins amongst each other. So uh -huh. as humans, we're really supposed to not condemn each other, but help each help other be healed. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so this book was really to try to help people to, and I put some really, how do I say, the first section is 10 essays from 10, men, um, 10 people, five men, five women, and they talk about their dysfunctional family. Mm, okay. And it's really, I, I make, I exaggerate, I make it as dysfunctional as you can get because my goal is for people to go, wow, this is horrible. Uh -huh. And then hopefully it gets them comfortable to talk about their own because hopefully they'll realize exactly. their own is mm -hmm. not as bad as that's what's in the book. Okay, got it. That's, that's why I choose that one. Okay. Wow, that's very interesting. Oh my goodness. I've, I've, throughout these a few minutes, I've learned so much. I've learned so much and I've been um definitely inspired like to oh okay i need to i need to really get going and write more 
uh, I need to really get going and write more. But I understand too. I'm I'm still in that phase where where you know. At at what point were you sure of yourself as a writer? Because at this point, I'm still kind of like you know, still kind of the battling the. Uh, am am I really good enough, or uh, is this you know? Although I had this um, a first book, and trust me, everybody who has ever read it, said, I said, "Oh my God, is you know, I love it. It's a good book. Um, I was inspired by it." But you know, what more or less helped you say, "Oh, okay, you know what? I'm a writer." <laughs> Actually, God. Um, wow. I was. Okay. The the thing is, so I was I forget where what year it was, but I had went to and by this time I was going to New York. I said forget the acting, I'll just work backstage. And so now I'm applying for jobs off stage and backstage, and I'm not getting anything. And so I remember coming home from a an interview of some sort, and I forget something. I I knew that I didn't get it of some sort, and I just said God, why isn't this working? And he said because you're a writer. So that's what wow. you're supposed to be doing. And my response was, did you forget my English, my English grade? <laughs> and he was like, but that's your problem is you're trying to write the way they want you to write. You're supposed to be writing the way I created you to write. And that's when I realized that I can understand the spelling and the grammar and all that. But every person, period, whatever job they have, their gift is unique. And we're not supposed to compare each other or compare our gifts to one another because it's unique. You know, even though um, ducks, penguins, and eagles are all birds, they're still different. And you can't compare them because they're, yeah. they don't yeah, sound yeah. the same, they don't do the same things, yeah. they don't live the same, they don't have the same diet, but they're still birds. And so even though we're different, we're still writers, we're still lawyers, we're still this, we're still that, but we're still unique and we're not supposed to compare ourselves and say, well, this is the way you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to start it this way, you're not supposed to do that. And I've read an array of books and they're all different. I've seen things that, that I was told you weren't supposed to do and yeah. yet they're best-selling books. Me too. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't read it, okay. but um, what's it? Um, my book club, I went to a book club session and before we did the session, two of the girls were talking about, they, they're, they're thinking about writing a book because they said they, they read, what did they read? The Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they said they could not believe of how many typos were in the book and how it passed editing with that many typos. Wow. But yet it became a bestseller. So exactly. it's like sometimes we, we spend so much time with things that don't matter and yet the the books and the authors that become bestsellers are not degree exactly. have, you know english exactly. teachers or professors or all that they're just people who had an idea they wrote it and boom and yep. so when he found when, when he told me you know you're supposed to write the way i created you to write not the way they want you to that's when i was like okay i'm gonna do this and prior to that i already heard some people say wow you're a good writer you know you write well but for me i was just like no i really don't want to do that and I think what really made me get, get serious is when I started doing small things just with writing and I saw success faster wow. than when I was trying to do theater. Okay. And it was just like, I guess I, this is who I am and this is what I should be doing. Okay. And so that's what made me realize I am a writer was that it was the only thing that I was finding the most success in as opposed to what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Wow, wow, we that's powerful. I have one more that, that um I uh, came up with the uh fifth question, which was okay, um after all your work, uh plays, children books, novels, you definitely have genres. <laughs> it is is it's rare for me to see one author have genres. Mm. Um that's a accomplishment in itself. Um but I was just thinking, as a writer, more or less, what's next for you on your writing journey and why? I mean, I just... What's next for me? A um, few things. I'm still in the process of working on another book. Um, I was a, It's called Four Keys to Success. I did a message on Sunday morning service about um, your identity. And I was telling people the reason why we fail so much because we identify ourselves by our 
our looks and our outer selves as far as our gender, ethnicity, and all that stuff, instead of identifying ourselves by our unique factors, which is our, you know, fingerprints and feet prints. And that the reason why lots of times we fail in life is because when people say, every time I touch something, I fail, that's because that something knows your fingerprints don't belong on it. Oh, wow. Blessings are, they're waiting for you. And even lots of times when people said, I'm praying, but God's not answering me because God told the angel, who you are but if you're trying to be someone else the angel can't find you to answer your prayers and so um and even the pathway you go that path knows your whether or not your pr prints are supposed to be there or not yeah and so um ed was like oh you should put that in a book and at first i was like i can't because it was actually um i gave them um uh, uh something to do i told them to draw their their prints out their hand prints out and then switch around and look at each other's and i said is there anything wrong with anybody's print and they're like no i said is it all different I'm like yeah and i was like so what's wrong with it and they're like nothing i said so then why do we think there's something wrong with someone being tall someone being short someone being black someone being white if our fingerprints could be different and there's nothing wrong with it why do we think there's something wrong with being different and so i realized the reason why we fell a lot is because we try to be like everything else. We try to fit in. We try to be this. We try to get the hairdo that everyone else has. We try to get the tattoos yeah. everyone else has. And we're trying to be everyone else. And this, your success path only knows you, not everyone you're trying to be. And so exactly. when you get on it, they're like, we don't know who you are. Sorry, we can't give you this because you're not who we were told you were going to be. Okay. And so I'm writing this book, um, Four Keys to Success. And they're basically about Ident um, your identity, finding yourself, because we lose ourselves. Lots of times we start doing things as children and then our parents or teachers or the church uh -huh. tells us we can't do that, we shouldn't do that, you're not good enough to do that, you're doing uh -huh. it the wrong way. So we completely stop doing it because we, we, you know, we're taught adults are always right and children are always wrong. So we give up ourselves. And then also um, learning about the um, crab mentality when people say, oh, you know, but a crab trying to tear people down, but by nature, crabs don't tear down because by nature, they're not in buckets. They're free along the seas uh, and seas are limitless. So by nature, they're point. limitless. That's so yeah. the reason why they're tearing down is because they're not used to being limited. In a, in a and bucket. so because we are created to be limitless, when we put ourselves in buckets or boxes of genders and zodiac signs and all that foolishness, we are now putting ourselves in buckets and we're limited. And when we see someone else who looks like us doing what someone told us we couldn't do, instead of realizing, oh, I need to get out this bucket, we try to tear them down and say, you can't do that. Yes, we do. Yeah. And wow. so I'm writing this book to kind of help people realize you got to be comfortable with being unique in the sense that you're not trying to change yourself, but in the same breath, you're not trying to change someone else because they don't look like you. So, and so that's okay. what I'm working on. And then I'm still, I've already finished a quotes book. I just have to get it copywritten. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's it. Nice. Okay. Well, Shucks, I was thinking more or less what we will see a feature film or sometime soon or something really huge. Nothing in the world. huge, <laughs> but I am actually working on a short film. Really? Okay, okay. A short film. It's probably going to 15, 20 minutes long. Um, okay. And the, it's going to be, um, I'm filming it with Zoom with actors. Oh. But I haven't okay. completed my cast yet. Uh, so it's in the okay. works. And that's why I didn't really want to talk about it because. Okay, I, sorry, 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 sorry. But I'm not like, but that's just I'm not at the point where I can, I, I'm waiting on two more people to get back to me. Oh, okay. And then we can start the process. But that is something I am working on. Okay. Yeah, because it seems like out of your huge body, like that's more or less that missing that one piece in a completed puzzle. And you just like, oh, OK, that's the piece that did you have the nice full picture. It just sounds like um, inwardly that I just kind of just felt that 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 might be that um, piece um, judging on everything that you've done. Uh, so, so uh, definitely inspiring. Definitely mm -hmm. inspiring. That is all the time we have today on this episode for Writer to Writer interviews. I am your host, Casey Bell, and I hope to see you again for another episode of Writer to Writer interviews. See ya.
yeah, with the experience you have now of publishing a book, what advice would you give someone about to embark in publishing? Uh, yeah, that's the, um, well, I wrote a few things. The first thing that I would um, give them as uh, advice that's about to embark in a publishing on a book is to first believe that they can do it. Mm -hmm. Again, um, some of us have ideas, but just don't believe enough in ourselves that we can actually go through it and actually be successful in completing it. So the first thing I would say is um, d just um, that they would need to believe that they can do it. The second thing is I would tell them to just start writing, just start writing a story. Cause already um, a few people have asked me and everybody says, oh, well, you know what? I'm gonna write a book about my life. I'm gonna write about a book about this or that, but they never start. So I'm just like, okay, if you never start, you will never complete it. So I would just tell them, um, start writing, just, just start writing. It doesn't have to be in order. You, you don't have to know the way you're going to end up yet. Just start writing. The next thing I was thinking is, um, don't stop working on the project because I know somewhere in there, especially if it's their first book, they're going to, that voice in the inner, um, that inner voice is going to say, no, it, um, it may not be good enough or some distractions will come. Life just happens and we will easily go and put it off to the side. So I would say, don't stop working on that project. And um, another thing, more or less the last thing is um, for them to take their time and understand that it's a process and it's gonna come in, in um, and it's gonna come in different phases. Like for instance, a phase one uh, for me was, I had to uh, type it all out. So it was this, the paper. Then more or less, I really wasn't getting enough out of just typing it. It wasn't like a visual enough that, okay, that I was gonna be an author. And so then I just put a draft together and, and this was a first draft. I mean, it didn't have everything in it, but after I did this, it really kickstarted me because I said, aha, I can really do it now. Oh, wow, I'll, I can really be an author. So then um, I did this. And then it more or less went to this, where then I had the, the final product to where I actually went and I paid the publishing, a company like to do it right and everything. So, so I would definitely give the advice that, um, so for the individuals to take the time, understand it's a process um, and just to keep at it and don't quit, which is the same thing that I had to do. <sighs> uh, don't quit. Keep at which, it. Which publishing company did you use? I used Elite, a publisher. Yeah. Um, what is so far? What is your your opinions on your on their on their services? Elite. Uh, I think they're okay. Um, actually, I think they're pretty good. Um, but uh, they're more or less like cookie cutter. I gave them some insight on how I wanted the book to be like in the inside. And they more or less just gave me like a cookie cutter, a format that they had already had. And I wanted them to go a little bit more in depth in regards to make the inside a little bit more alive. Mm -hmm. And um, so if I go with them again, that's one of the main aspects that I'm gonna get down for the company to abide by, like, hey, listen, I'm not gonna pay unless right. we agree and you actually give me what I really, really need, which is I need to inside a little bit more lively, not just the words and just everything like cookie cutter, but other than that. And when you, they do publishing, did they do marketing and advertising and all that for you too? No. No? No, no, no. Okay. So, so actually, I still need to do more the research and find um, a different a companies, of course. I just went with the a first thing that I felt was professional. And more or less, um, they, their advertisement was what caught my eye. Like the okay. books that they've done, it looked really professional. It looked really, really good. Um, and they said that they did a few big, big um the writer's work that was on tv and everything else like that so that was so that was one of the main things that um 
that actually caught my eye. Yep, Did yep. you only make one shirt or is there a place people can buy those shirts? No, yeah, actually, actually, there's a place where you, you can get these shirts and my book, which is my website, which is um, a www www.accountable, the letter N, responsible.com. So it's okay. accountable in responsible.com. So there on my website, you who you, you can get the book, t-shirts. Actually, the t-shirt is a process as well because I have this one, which has the handprint. I copywritten that one. And also I kind of evolved to have a different t-shirt. It says the same thing on it, but it more or less of a parallel with the a cover of the book. So I don't know if, but you can see, but this one, it has like okay. a little a clock a symbol mm -hmm. and it has like all the same information because of the time a symbol here. Okay, I see. Yeah, so, so just more or less. Um, and, and you can also get the, um, both of those on a website too. So, yep, yep. So, so I'm learning everything is a process. Mm -hmm. Everything is a process. Everything mm -hmm. is a process. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. But from you, I mean, I must say, I just learned so much just from hearing all that you've been through and your processes and, and just looking at all the work that you've done. I mean, I learned so much. Always learning, always learning. Yeah, small, yeah I'm always learning too. Always learning. You have to. Yep.